Hey, I'm Fred Minnick, and this week's hot take, I'm about to piss off people who like to sell itty bitty 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 bottles. Giddy up. So back in the day, you used to be able to walk into a liquor store and you would see shelves upon shelves, a big, gorgeous, giant, freaking 1.75 liter bottles like this. Now they still exist. You can still find, you know, Maker's Mark in that size. You can find a few others uh, like that as well. But I'm talking about the greatest wild turkeys I have ever tasted would be in these enormous bottles. This Chop It and Gore right here, absolutely fantastic. Back in the day, you could get Willard 12 year old in sizes like this. Isn't that crazy? Willard 12 year old? But here's the thing, here's what's happened. The bean counters, the accountants within the distilleries, have learned, hmm, we can make more money if we spread the liquid out in more of the tiny bottles. And as if 750 wasn't small enough, or the 200 milliliter, or the 375, the federal government has allowed distillers to stretch it out even more into like 700s and even smaller bottles than that. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. I think it's good that we have a variety of lar of a variety of bottle sizes. But at some point, the whiskey industry kind of got away from good old-fashioned jug whiskey. I mean, a handle. You want to be able to pick your whiskey up, take it to a tailgate, and just straight pour it like that. I think I think we've lost something in American whiskey by not offering these cool jugs. I think they're, one, they're pretty kick-ass and beautiful. Two, if you're a whiskey drinker, you, you know, you got a lot of whiskey. And three, well, I think it's just more whiskey. I kind of like the idea of, of a big-ass bottle of whiskey. I mean, right? I mean, if wine can have magnums, why can't we have these like all the time? In fact, I want I want like I want a five gallon bucket size. Give me give me a five gallon bucket of bourbon. Or no, I take that back. Give me an entire barrel. Like don't even don't even like put it in a package. Just just sell the whole barrel of whiskey and bring it to my house. I've got straws big enough for it. You know, I kid, I kid. But seriously, wouldn't that be awesome if you could have your own barrel just sitting in your house, aging there, just kind of sipping out of it every now and then? Kids, get away from the barrel! That's how that would go in my house. Anyway, I, this is just kind of a, a fun plea to the, industry, to the industry. Bring back these 175 bottles. People like me really loved them, and they sit in, they can, you can keep them for a long time. You know, the bottles are great. And I think we really should see the return of the octagon bottle in Wild Turkey. If you know that bottle, you know how good that whiskey is. Of course, everything from Wild Turkey in the 1970s was better than pretty much everything today. And uh, that's uh, kind of how I feel. So bring back the big giant jugs of bourbon. And uh, we'll put, you'll put a smile on the face of a lot of us bourbon drinkers. So, bring back the jugs. Bring back the bourbon jugs. Okay, that doesn't sound as good as bringing back Maker's Mark 12. Year, bring us Maker's 12-year-old. So, I will retire the chant of bring us the bourbon jugs. Doesn't sound as good. But anyway, that's going to do it for this hot take. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hey, if you want to check out more hot takes, click that subscribe button. If you want to learn more about American whiskey, you're in the right place. I'm going to teach you. I'm going to train you. And I'm going to tell you what I think about bourbons. Uh, but that's going to do it for this episode. So remember, no licking handrails, no licking trash cans. And vodka sucks unless it's being used for hand sanitizer. Cheers, everybody.